Life can change in an instant. For many wheelchair users, the struggle to push forward is a daily challenge. After years of development and countless prototypes, we created Rib Grips, the revolutionary wheelchair hand rim covers with built-in ribs for ultimate grip and comfort. No more slick surfaces, no more heat burns, just pure, reliable grip. Rib Grips, empowering you to push forward with ease. Rib Grips, get a grip on your freedom. Discover the difference. Visit ribgrips.com and use promo code GRIP today. You just found the perfect product that helps with staying cool during hot summer runs. No more gross warm water. Stay cool with this product from Gear Handle. This hydration tube cover helps keep your water cool and easily accessible. Stay hydrated during those long summer runs or even delay from freezing in the winter. Plus, they're compatible with various brands of water bladders and come in various colors. Visit GearHandle.com and use promo code H2O today. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Welcome back to Silent Witness, the true crime cold case podcast here at Rogue Media Network, hosted by Christina. Hello, hello. And me, Erica. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm here. I'm here. (laughs) We are up here on the 21st floor of the Alica. Yeah. It is a pretty day today. I know. Yesterday I was hoping we'd get that hurricane to... Want to cool us off a little? Yes. No. no. (laughs) Negative ghostwriter. Okay. All right. What you got for us, ma'am? All right. So we got Bianca Carrisco. Carrisco. C A R R A S C O. Okay. Um, so let's go to San Antonio. All righty. Okay. Um, which we'll be jumping from Odessa to San Antonio, but so we go back to the year 2016. Okay. Not so, too far. Okay. No. We have a little history, of course, a little history lesson. I love it. <laughs> um, so what happened in 2016? We had five Dallas police officers were ambushed and killed during mm-hmm. a Black Lives Matter protest. Uh, Trump defeated Hillary Clinton for president. Pulse nightclub shooting in Florida killed 49 people. Uh, Yeah. Prince and David Bowie died. Mm -hmm. I know. Love David Bowie. So back to San Antonio, which is known for the river walk in the Alamo. Oh, yeah. I like San Antonio. Yeah. That's a good touristy. So before we begin, I want to give a special thanks to Giovanna Bernie. Um, She helped me with the research, answered all my questions um, via email. We couldn't connect over Zoom, but um, she did answer all of my questions. Um, I sent her my show notes um, at to date. I haven't heard back if they were okay or not, so hopefully they are. But um, so a big thank you to Jovanna. She wants this case solved. I'll bet. Okay. And um, so Bianca. Bianca was born July 21st in 1986 in Odessa. Okay. Her sister, um, Giovanna, they're 18 months apart. They're the only two out of their biological parents. I, I believe they have some half siblings. Okay. Um, but they have, gr- they grew up, they were close in age, I think just 18 months apart. Yeah. And very, very close. Mm-hmm. Um, but they did have a hard childhood. Okay. Um, but they had each other to rely on to get through it. Um, The sisters were sent to live with their father in Houston. Okay. Uh, Their father, um, when they were young, um, their father was very, very strict Mm -hmm. during their childhood. Um, They didn't have much of a connection with their mother during this time because the father told them how she was awful, bad, blah, 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 blah. You know, just the whole. And this is a pattern in this family you'll see in a minute. Okay. But, um, you know. Bianca's mother dealt with some substance abuse issues. Okay. Um, and so they, it was a complicated relationship, distant. And then, they, you know, of course, dad didn't let them have contact. So, mm. it, you know, they didn't, during their growing up, when they moved in with their dad, didn't have a relationship. Okay. With their mom. Yeah. Okay. Um, when Bianca, this is how strict dad was. When Bianca was 17, she got a little rebellious, a little, <laughs> you know, like kids do, teenagers That's do. That's about the age for it. Yeah. Okay. Um, she got pregnant. 
Okay. And her father not being happy and strict and definitely not happy about the situation, pressured, almost forced uh, her to put up the baby for adoption. Oh. Which Bianca did. Okay. So after the, the adoption, uh, Bianca reconnected with her mother and moved to Odessa. Oh, huh. okay. It was a difficult time for Bianca. You yeah. Know, you got to deal with that heartbreaking struggle and emotions yeah. with giving a baby up for adoption that uh -uh. she may not have really wanted to, sure. but it was forced, but you know, did. But Bianca also, you know, had a, had a light. She was funny. Mm -hmm. She was, um, when life got hard, she made jokes. Okay. Which I love because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, she just make you laugh when, sure. when some a hard subject come up. She just make a joke out of it. So um, her early life was really difficult, but she found humor. Okay, and um, she was very driven, mm -hmm. very organized. Um, hmm. Her sister said that everything was labeled in her house, and you know she was that organized. Okay, um, she knew what she wanted to do and did work hard to achieve it. Okay, so you know. Um, when Bianca was 18, she met a man named Joe Daniel Carrasco. I hope I'm saying that right. Carrasco. Uh, so when she was 18, she met Joe Daniel Carrasco. Bianca likely looked at him as a stable, someone to take care of her. Joe was older. He was, uh, you know, 29. She was 18. Oh okay. And he was her uncle. Oh, come on. Like by blood, uncle? He was married to Bianca's aunt. Mom's sister. So not blood uncle, uncle by no, marriage. No, uh, uncle by marriage, right. Okay. But, mm. According to her sister, Giovanna, Joe mm -hmm. was uh, in the process of divorcing Brenda, which is Bianca's aunt. Okay. Um, and out of spite, began to woo or court Bianca. Oh, oh, okay. Joe mm -hmm. finds out um, at some point that his wife, Brenda, the aunt was, mm -hmm. was having an affair with his best friend. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, he was arrested uh, for assault. I guess a fight. I'm not sure about the details on that. Okay. Um, it, it's just a mess. It's okay. just convoluted and it's a mess. That is but a lot. He, you know, said, okay, you want to fool around with my best friend? I'm going to fool around with your beautiful nice. niece. Because Bianca it, is stunning. Really? Stunning. Oh. Um. Bianca becomes pregnant and they marry. Okay. Um, they quick they welcome a second child pretty early in their marriage, and uh, Bianca begins attending college in Odessa, and that's where they they lived before moving to San Antonio. Okay. Okay. So she began the nursing program at Odessa College. Good for you. Um, I'm not a nurse, but my mom was, and it's hard. Yeah. I. The school is challenging. It's um, long days. It's clinicals. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, on top of having, you know, young children, a family, Bianca had her hands full. Mm -hmm. um, I went to college with young children and it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Um, so um, she, you know, got strength and, and, and she wanted to do something for her life. And, you know, she became an LVN. Okay. Um which is a licensed vocational nurse. Yes, ma'am. Um, so about after that, the, the family moved to San Antonio and bought a house. Okay. The couple welcomed a third child. Okay. Uh, Bianca returned to nursing school. Um, and so now she has three children. Mm -hmm. And she's in the RN program, mm -hmm. registered nurse program, mm -hmm. which is going to be even more difficult. Way. Yes. Those are long days. Uh-huh. Um. According to my research at this time, um, I, Joe worked in the oil fields, which okay. required him to be so off. He was gone. Yeah. So he was, you know, if you work in the oil fields, you're off at the coast for a week at a time and you come back for a day or two and go back. And so she was not only caring for three young children um, and attending nursing school and keeping a house. And her husband was not there. And her husband's not there. Uh, it took a lot of smarts and organization and, you know, yeah. to, to she, deal with that. Lot. It's hard. Yeah. But, you know, she was determined. And, sure. You know, she wanted to do that. But the the marriage between Joe and Bianca was never good, never strong. Uh, okay. It was rocky from the beginning. Just well, like I said, a convoluted mess. Right. Joe was very controlling. Oh, yay. 
um, and abusive. There's no evidence of physical, Mm -hmm. but emotional. And, And if you're being controlling and, you know, that's an emotional, that's yeah. abusive. It's abusive. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I asked Jovanna about physical, and she says she doesn't know firsthand of any, but would okay. not be surprised if that were the case. Okay. Hmm. Um, he kept Bianca away from her family, you know, so that's part of, you know. Yeah. That's and part that of that control abusive. Control and abuse. Yeah. Uh-huh. And Ugh. it is a tactic that abusers use. Yep. Um, Control it was, and isolation. Yeah. And that's what he did. And I think it was easy in the beginning for her, for him to control her because she was 18. Sure. Um, she was young, impressionable. Um, but as she got older and wiser and got through school and talked to other people mm-hmm. and made friends and, you know, she saw him for who he was. Okay. And, you know, if you think about it, it's amazing how you grow from when you're 18 to 29. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you're a whole different person. Completely. Yeah. So, um, I believe, you know, her entering in, you know, her late twenties going into her thirties, she was realizing what, well, it wasn't a healthy, it was a very toxic relationship sure. with Joe. So she's, you know, growing up, getting mature, getting wiser and realizing, hmm. Yeah. You're not a nice dude. No. Okay. No. I, I did look at records for Joe. Um, he did not have um, much as far as criminal. Of course, he did have, um, so Odessa is Leon County here okay. in Texas. He did have a PI or two, public intoxication. Okay. Um, he did have some traffic stuff, and he did have that assault we talked about. Right. Um, Bear County, there is something, but it's not criminal. I'll discuss that in a little bit. Okay. Um, so in October 2015... Bianca graduated nursing school and Aww. became a registered nurse. Yay. Her sister was really proud of her, Heck obviously yeah. walking the stage. It was an accomplishment mm-hmm. that, you know, graduating nursing school with three young children. Mm-hmm. It's just, it, it was a lot. And I can just imagine how proud she was. Oh, you heck know? yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, she began working as an oncology nurse. Okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. And as someone who knows a little bit about that, mm-hmm. not what they do, but that oncology side mm-hmm. um they're your god when you're dealing with cancer that's who you talk to you know that's who's helping you with your chemo and you know to feel better you don't get to see the doctors as no, much you see your nurses you see your nurses yeah. that has a high burnout rate it's a yeah. very tough department it's, it takes someone special to work in oncology it for does. sure mm. and she was just beginning her career so you know um well bianca and joe had been married for 10 years at this point okay um, of course, it was strained and getting worse. Sure. Bianca's yeah. grown and, you know. And he stayed the same. Yeah. And he's controlling, but um, she she's done. Okay. She's done. She changed her Facebook status to single, which Ooh. was big. Yeah. Um, they still lived in the same house because they owned it. They bought mm-hmm. the house. Okay. Um, and the kids were there, obviously. They didn't want to, you know, they wanted as best as possible for the kids. They didn't want to disrupt their world too much. Okay. Um, but they were separated. Okay. Just, and at this point, he was still in the oil field. So he wasn't there as much, you know. He, sure. So was it filed? Like, was the separation legally filed? No. Or, no. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. And I've never really seen a whole lot of that in Texas. Where okay. you file a legal separation, you you would file the divorce and then have like orders in place during that time. Yeah, there is a legal separation is there? in Texas. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I was I've never seen it, and I've and I've yeah. you know. I think most people. I don't think you realize it's there until you start to go through the divorce paperwork. Yeah, and, then, and, it, and it probably. And like, oh, should we have done that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, they didn't want to hurt the kids anymore. But you know, she. Of course, had her doubts, too. Mm-hmm. You know, she's just getting started in a career. She didn't want to hurt the kids. Yeah. So, of course, she had doubts about the divorce. You okay. know, she was worried about money, which, of course, you're going to be when you're going to raise yeah. three kids. Um, but nursing can, as as you get going and find good jobs, pay pays very well. Yeah. I know my mom, who was an RN, made more than most doctors. Yeah, you can do. But that was later in her career. You can do very well. Yeah. Um. Joe had decided he was not going to let Bianca go. Okay. He quit his job in the oil field and began working close to home. So he was home more. 
Okay. So, you know, we see a pattern here with Joe. He, um, you know, he's, he's, he wants the marriage to work, so he's going to come home and be there more to keep an eye out on her. Okay. So, you know, it's a pattern. But um, he eventually finds out that she's speaking with somebody else. Ooh. Um, one thing to make clear is that a lot of the research said men, as in multiple, but okay. it wasn't. It was just one. Oh, okay. Um, it, it, it was just speaking. They may have met once or twice, but it wasn't anything serious. Okay. Okay. Um, but Joe found out. Mm-hmm. And according to, you know, some other information that I saw on other podcasts that focused on this case, mm-hmm. he uh, got into her phone and that's okay. how he found out. Which oh. ha- that happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't able to find out too much information about the other man, but, okay. you know, it wasn't any, again, according to her sister, it wasn't anything deep. It wasn't serious. It wasn't right. any, yeah. Okay. It was just probably in the beginning stages. Okay. Um, but remind everyone they were separated, even though they were still living in the same house. Right. Not legally, but they were, you know, we are separated, you know, so. But he came home. So in his mind, was he thinking they were separated or was he working on his marriage? He was working on his marriage. Yeah. She was not. Right. <laughs> there's a, there's, um, a, there's they were, a misstep there. Yeah. But, so let's talk about how Joe handled this new information. Probably not well. No. (laughs) Because he's controlling, he's manipulative, he lashed out. Yeah. He emptied their bank account and put all of their money in another account without her name on it. Dude. Controlling. And basically in his mind, this is just reading his mind, you know, but this is typical behavior of an abusive controlling manipulative okay, but like person how? because this isn't 1978 this is just like six years ago eight years ago like how yeah how was he able to move all that money right he didn't close it he just moved it yeah he took it all out um hmm. but he he's thinking in hmm. his mind she's not gonna leave without any money right you know she has no means so um so bianca had sent a text to her sister okay um it said daniel emptied the account and opened another account without my name on it so I have no access to money except my credit card, which is almost at its limit. Mm, mm-hmm. Bianca continued, I will not be controlled by a man or money. Okay. Good job, Bianca. So um, this happened on Wednesday, April 27th, 2016. So okay. she graduated in October the year you know before, mm-hmm. and then this was April. Okay. Um, she told, according to some other research I found, um, she was... She told coworkers that Joe threatened her over text. Mm. Um, she'd gotten a new phone because he'd gotten in that one. Sure. So he, but yeah. he had threatened her. Um, Joe, true to form, told her, you can't live without me. You can't support your kids. Blah, 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 yeah. blah. You know, mm-hmm. that's what they say. You know, nobody's going to want you. Yeah. All that. I'm 100% know that's what he said, but we can guess. It's a good guess. Yeah. <laughs> But they pounded in that you can't make it without me. Nobody's going to want you, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So he was, you know, she basically um, said that she made a point of telling her coworkers that if she ever comes up missing, huh. they know what happened. Oh. Whether this was insight or she was scared, I don't know. But it's wow. very telling. Yeah. Okay. So she's telling everybody, if something happens to me, look at my husband. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So Mindy, May 1st. Mm-hmm. So this was, you know, around the end of April. So Monday, uh, Monday, Sunday, May 1st, okay. Sunday, May 1st, 2016, Joe Vanna, her sister, spoke to Bianca. They discussed Bianca seeing a lawyer. They discussed the kids. Bian- Bianca also talked to her about arguing with Joe. And, luck- J- you know, Joe Vanna ended with, I love you. Okay. To her sister. Mm-hmm. The next day, May 2nd, um, her sister tried calling Bianca. No mm-hmm. response. Went straight to voicemail, which was not like her. Okay. Um, she, Her sister tried calling her job. She hadn't shown up. Bianca hadn't mm-hmm. showed up for her shift, mm-hmm. which was also uncharacteristic. Okay. Um, and she didn't call in. Okay. So she just, did, just didn't show yeah. up. No show. Okay. Concerned, Giovanna called Joe. 
And he told her they got in a fight and she stormed off, leaving the house on foot. Of course, concerned. Jovanna's, you know, now worried. Yeah. She asked about the kids and Joe said that um, she left the kids. Mm -hmm. So the kids were at home. Mm -hmm. Um, Then after uh, discovering Bianca never showed up for work, Jovanna said, can you call your aunt and ask if you've talked to Bianca? Ask if she talked to Bianca. Joe Joe states, no sister, let her be for a little bit. Hmm. Jovanna then responds, she still doesn't have her car. And Joe says, no, probably using that guy's. (laughs) So, of course, Jovanna doesn't believe that Bianca would leave with no car, none of her things, her Mm -mm. children at home, Mm -mm. at dark, on foot. Right. So, um, this sounds familiar. Yeah. So I, this I is, I don't think that makes sense. She just walked away. Yeah. We're not stupid. Yeah. This is a lot like the Shelley Watkins yeah, case. Yeah. So this is when Jovanna called the police. Um, sh- so let me point out that the next day Joe didn't care to call the police or even look for Bianca. That, that Monday or like, you mean the next day, the like next the Tuesday, that Monday. Okay. Yeah. Um, so her sister called the police and, you know, told Joe, hey, I'm I'm going to, you know, call the police. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, call me after. Um, <laughs> and so the police officer asked, why didn't Joe call? Right. Once he realized she didn't come home. Pretty basic question. Yeah. And um, so let's see. Joe told the police about that night. So let me back. About the Sunday? Yeah. Let me back up, though. Okay. Um, I wonder if he overheard her talking to her sister about the lawyer and stuff. I don't know. I mean, he I certainly know. doesn't seem to think privacy is a thing. I think, I think she was, she, that day, I think I'll get into it here in just a second. Okay. Um, but if not, I'll clarify. But Joe told the police about that night. He stated that he did have an argument, that they had an argument, and she okay. left home on foot. Um. But let, let me clarify one thing. Once the sister, once Jovanna called the police, mm-hmm. um, she did text Joe, like I said, and said, and he said, call me when you're done. Right. So when the officer says, well, why didn't he call the, you know, there's no answer. He, he goes, oh, no worries. I'll call. The officer said, I'll call Joe. Okay. So um, when he does call Joe, he just, Joe says wrong number. Hangs up. What? Yes. <laughs> Wrong number. And hangs You're up. so dumb. Uh, after this. Oh, no, sir. Right after this, Joe calls and files a missing person's report with the police. Oh, oh now he's worried. Okay. Uh, yeah. After you tell the officer, wrong number. Wrong number. Um, so back to what Joe says. Okay. Joe tells the officers that after Bianca left, he got in his vehicle with his youngest child. Okay. The two older were still at home alone. Okay. He was headed to work. With the kid? Uh, yes. Okay. I don't know if he dropped the kid off. I'm not from sure about that. But he headed to work and last saw Bianca walking alone on foot down the street. Okay. Joe headed to Odessa where he worked, which is about five hours away from San Antonio area. Okay. And again, leaving the two other children at home alone. He worked his shift. Would not have gotten home until the next day. Is that in there somewhere? It, like, is there proof that he worked his shift? I don't know. Or is this just his version of, of life? This is his, this is what he, this is his version. I, okay. I, I don't know. That would be all police stuff. And they're not, again, the police aren't going to tell us anything. Okay. Um. But it's confusing. The whole story is confusing, especially yeah. his side of it. So he basically he worked his shift, would get, which would go into the next day because okay. this was in the evening at dark. So he would have had Sunday. So it was a yeah. So Sunday it was an evening. all night shift. Okay. And uh, so yeah, he left the kids home alone. The two. The two. Yeah. But took the youngest. I took what? the youngest. I don't know what he did with her. Okay. If he took her to or, or him, I don't know. But according to Crime Lines podcast, police develop a timeline. Okay. Via her phone records. Okay. And this is according to another podcast, but uh, she speaks to her sister again on my first, like we talked about mm-hmm. Bianca ran some errands and then texted her oldest daughter. 
um, returned home around 8 p.m., texted the man she was speaking with. I think his name was Jason. Okay. And about 30 minutes later, tried to call him, and then her phone goes silent. Hmm. So, yeah, Joe was probably home hearing this. Mm Mm-hmm. Again, that podcast um, also talks about CPS became involved okay. with the case due to Bianca, of course, being missing and apparently what? Joe admitting having left the kids home alone. Yeah, but they are also, aren't, isn't the one of them old enough at this point? I mean, by Texas law, I mean, one of them has to be 12 by now if they. Well, they were, on, they were, yeah, no. They were married for over 10 years. About 10 years. So he would have at the most I'm guessing about 10. Oh, okay. And he would not have been old enough okay. to take care of. The younger one. So, okay. This is not making any sense. So what time did Joe say that he went to work and took the baby? The youngest? Mm. Because you just... Well, according to the timeline, it would have been um, after 8 because that's when she returned home. So it would have been around nine o'clock or so, um, nine thirty. Her phone went went dead about eight thirty. So it would have, according to him, when he she walked off, it would have been you know after eight thirty. But that's what I'm saying. Like, do we know that, or do we, or is his story that he left for work and took the baby at like seven thirty? No, no, no. He left for work and saw her working walking, walking down the away street. Is his story? Is his story? He took the youngest. Okay. Headed to work, okay. cast her while she was walking down the street. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, CPS, of course, were involved. Sure. I'm not sure the details on that. Um, yeah, no. They investigated the family, and um, I, I think Jovanna had them for a little bit while it was all being investigated. Oh, okay. Um, but... We'll see in a second. They didn't. They didn't stay with her. The kids did it. But it was enough that CPS took them out of the home? Just for a little bit. Very, very short time. Still. Okay. Um, of course, the police continued to investigate the disappearance. Okay. Um, Joe last saw her. So he told police that she was wearing a denim jacket, multicolored leggings, and wedge shoes, and carrying a, her Prada purse. Okay. He told Jovanna he could not remember what she was wearing and left her purse at home. What? Okay. So um, if Joe did allow the police to search the home and the vehicles, but it's unclear if they searched the vehicles okay. and if anything was discovered. Okay. Um, the areas where she would have been, the neighborhood, around the house, all that was also searched and nothing came up. Okay. So... Um, most of the details of the investigation were not released by the police, but uh, Joe was working in Odessa that evening, um, which is many hours away. And there's, if you think about it, there's a lot of land to hide a body oh. between San Antonio and Odessa. And that's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of mileage. Yeah. Uh, Joe told News 4 in San Antonio that he was working in Odessa while they were finalizing their divorce. Mm-hmm. They were, they didn't file the divorce. I was going to say, you said they didn't. They didn't file. Okay. They were, I even looked for divorce records. There was none. And I thought he stopped working oil. Why was he going all the, I thought he got a local job. Why was he going all the way to Odessa? I don't know. Lies, Joe. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Um, the only records I found were uh, for, foreclosure paperwork from the home in San Antonio that was oh. filed in 2019. Oh, Okay. This was after. This was way after. Bianca's name is still on the paperwork. Was she not ever found? No. <gasps> she's still not been found. Oh, so she's still a missing person. Yes. Um, so, um, and as far as that that um, foreclosure, it was eventually dismissed in 2022. And I don't know if he paid. I don't, I know that that was during COVID. I say that's right during, yeah, during COVID, he probably got some kind of a. It's okay. Yeah. Um, Joe never d- took a polygraph at the advice of his attorney. Of course, he lawyered up. Mm-hmm. And um, again, Bianca has never been found. Hmm. Um, she's, she disappeared. Mm. Um, and of course, an attorney is going to say, stop talking. Shut up. You're not yeah. taking a polygraph. That's typical what yeah. attorneys say. You're not going to talk to the police. You're not going to talk to the media. Mm-hmm. You're going to talk to nobody. Sure. 
Uh, today, Joe is currently living with his and Bianca's children. Mm. He has been raising the children all these years. So it's been about, mm. what, eight years? Mm-hmm. Um, so he did get the children hmm. um, in the home he shared with Bianca with his new girlfriend. Want to know whose new girlfriend is? Her aunt. A, ge- a different. So went back to Brenda? No, or a, a different. different. An aunt on the father's side. Like, branch out, Joe. Joe's got something with this family. Gosh. They, and I asked, I said, what is up with this family? And I'm, you know, I, of course, said, uh, not to be disrespectful, but what the heck? And, and, and. Sorry if it's disrespectful. This well, is- no, no, I, I'm not going to be disrespectful to the family. Well, to, to, come on, aunt, your niece is missing. And That's, the man that you're in love with or whatever is the suspect. I'll, I'll, I'll be no, disrespectful. No, I didn't want to be disrespectful to Jovanna. That's yeah, who I was talking to. I like you. Yeah, so. We want to find out what happened to your but, sister. And I man. said, what's up with this family? And, yeah. and she said, basically, it's a stick it to you. Like, I don't know. Like, Joe, can't you find somebody else other than family? Calm yeah. down. Go away. But it is Bianca and Jovanna's aunt on their father's side. Bianca's family has not had contact with the children since um, he obtained custody, which I I believe was pretty short after. In fact, according to Jovanna, he has told them their mom just left him, didn't want him, didn't want to be a mom anymore, never to Uh. return. And I believe that because that's, I mean, if we we look at the Shelley Watkins case, that's, even though they found a body in that case, you know. Well, any abuser. That's what, you know, that's brainwashing. And yeah, he wants the kids to love him. He's the hero. Um, and I know, you know, people talk about brainwashing as crazy talk and it's not a real thing, but it is. Absolutely. You know, you convince somebody from young age on, you know, that, that mom is gone. She didn't want you. Yeah. You're going to believe that. And even, you know. Nobody wants you. I want you. I love you. Look, your family doesn't even come around. Like, look at that. That's horrible. And, you know, and it's likely he's doing that with the new girlfriend. Um, Their great aunt. Yeah. (laughs) Either, you know, either they're dumb or or either she's dumb or knows or scared. I don't know. But there was um, one point that the girlfriend aunt was driving one of the kids around removing the poster sign, missing poster signs of Bianca. What? Yeah. How are you going to do that? That's your niece. The, oh, gross. The whole thing is just a nightmare. Messy. Messy nightmare. Um, is Joe, like, incredibly good looking or making no. a shit ton of money? Like, what is the obsession with this dude? Ugh. I don't know. He's manipulative. I don't know. He's a... He's something. Um, he's something. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I, as far as I know, they investigated that Jason guy, the, okay. the guy, and, and cleared him. Okay. As far as I've seen from my research, he's been cleared. Okay. Um, that they fully investigated him. I think, I didn't even think, I think he didn't even know she was married. Oh. So I think he's been pretty well cleared of this. So um, Bianca's been missing since May 1st, 2016, okay. which has been about eight years. Hmm. Um. She has not been heard from since. No activity on her cell phone or bank records. Mm. She would not have left her children and her family. No. She would not have left those children. I don't uh, think she'd cut her sister out either. No. Of course not. She was very close to her sister yeah. and would not have left mm-hmm. and never to be seen again. No. Um, and we hear about missing, you know, people all the time. And, you know, the the husband who's the main suspect is saying, oh, they she just, she's off with some other dude. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh. so bianca is 5'1 125 pounds long dark hair stunningly beautiful she really Just i looked her up she's gorgeous gorgeous she has the letter b tattooed on her hip uh javana stated and i will agree with her someone knows something yeah someone knows this one's something new this one's pretty fresh yeah um come forward somebody knows something um she I asked, think Miss Ant knows something. Uh, Ant knows something. It's just who knows. I don't know. Um, Shh. but you know, she, Jovanna asked that you know Bianca's picture and missing information be shared 
on okay. all social media. Okay. And if you follow us, please reshare it. Um, let's get it out there. Um, let's get her information out there. Let's get her picture back out there. Mm-hmm. Let's get some traction on this case. Yeah. It's cold and, you know, um, it will be on all of our platforms, Silent Witness TX. Um, it will, I will put it on TikTok. You'll put mm-hmm. it on Instagram and mm-hmm. Facebook mm-hmm. Um, as this is coming out. Wow. As you probably can pick up on, there isn't much family helping her at this point with this. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, mean. her sister says, you know, and I think this was a quote from what she told me, Bianca may come from a pile of messy, mm-hmm. but she is loved and terribly missed. Mm. Her life is just as important as anyone else's. Yeah. A hundred percent. And look at how hard she worked to make her life I mean, better. LVN, RN, doing all that with three young children. Come on. That she, woman was working toward a good life. Yeah. And she worked hard to better her life mm-hmm. coming from such a, you know, and if you look at the pattern in her life, the father who mm-hmm. was controlling in, 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 Abusive. Uh, Probably Mm -hmm. abusive. The father. Then you go to Joe right after, you Mm -hmm. know, and he's the same way. And she was, you know, like, wait a minute. All relationships don't have to be toxic. I'm going to get out of this. And this likely ended her life because of this. (sighs) Um, But she came from dysfunction like we all do. But she turned it around. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's tremendously loved by her sister and family. Um, she deserves justice. She deserves somebody to speak up and to say something. Well, I think her kids deserve to know that she didn't leave them. A hundred percent. And that's the net, you know, thing. And I'm hoping as they get older and grow up and see. Mm-hmm. Mom, They'll start to question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's easy to kind of fall in line when you're a kid and that's all you're being told. But sure. hopefully, you know, and even Giovanna said, you know, it's it, you get past that, it, you know, with the father. And they see now that it was not healthy. It was abusive. So, Mm -hmm. you know, as they get older, they'll see that. Yeah, I hope. But, you know, her, Bianca deserves justice. She deserves to be, to go back to her family in any Mm. way that, you know. Um, But please, if you know anything, 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 please contact San Antonio Police at 210-207-7662. Or Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Mm-hmm. Anybody. Jovanna begs. We here at Silent yes. Witness beg. Anyone with information, no matter how small to please, get in contact. Um, and let's get justice for Bianca because she deserves it and she deserves to be found. Well, she did not leave her family. She, no. Not voluntarily. She's Ugh. somewhere unlikely alive well wow what unlikely alive is that what you said yeah at least at first i thought you said Not, likely alive i was like what no 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 i don't think yeah, she's alive. i don't think oh man and like we always say somebody knows something yes some little tidbit that could be just what the police need to open that next door right and make that next step so let's we just let's just help them gosh. come on we want to i mean we want to help everybody yes you know let's let's get bianca's information out there and Mm -hmm. let's hope the media picks up on it let's get some pressure joe needs to break and 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 come clean what he did with her he (laughs) needs to be in prison he needs to get done to him don't hold back christina he needs to get done to him in prison what he did to. (laughs) well i don't know i'm so curious he needs to get controlled in prison big bubba okay oh that's taking a turn (laughs) ma'am we know how christina feels yep uh, yeah, please, 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 if you know anything, get in contact with San Antonio. San Antonio Police, 210-207-7662. San Antonio Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers, 210-224-STOP. Stop. S-T-O-P. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's get the news out there. And aunt, auntie, come, come on. on. Don't pull posters down. God. You're better ah. than that. I you mean, get- I don't know. But at least, you know, be on the side of those children. I don't know if they're they're not necessarily children anymore, but be on their side. They deserve so much better. Yeah. They deserve to know what really. And God bless. They need to get away from that man. Yeah. So, and they need to get the truth about their mom. Yeah. Oh, you know? poor Javan. I can't. Oh, your sister. Yeah. Oh, 
heartbreaking. Okay. The whole thing is. Thank you so much for listening. If you know anything, we've given you several places where you can contact somebody, share anything you know, um, plaster this all over, grab these pictures, share, share, share. Thank you so much for listening to Silent Witness. This has been a Rogue Media Network production. Are you a podcaster? Let's talk podcast hosting. Are you tired of your current podcast host? Need real support in a community that gets it? At Rogue Media Network, we offer top-tier podcast hosting services to help you thrive. From hosting and distribution to dedicated support, we've got you covered. Starting as low as $25 a month. Join our community of passionate podcasters today. Contact us at hello at roguemedianetwork.com.